So before I started to record this video, I found out about what happened to Etika, and I just want to say that my thoughts are with his family at this time. Kind of a crazy story. Um, but I just found out, and I wanted to just say that. That's just kind of still in disbelief over it, to be honest. It's pretty crazy. But uh, anyways, let's talk about Toy Story 4. I went to go see this film, the fourth Toy Story film in the uh, Toy Story franchise. Of course, I saw the first one back in 95. Not in theaters. I saw it on home video. And, uh, you know, the first thing that struck me about Toy Story 4, because I went back and marathoned, you know, Toy Story 2, 3, etc. in preparation for this film, is how the special effects, even in 95 when the first one came out and the way they kind of made this, like, kind of all CGI or, or whatever you want to call it, uh, rendered uh, film, it was a big deal back then. And I remember really enjoying the way it looked. And I was skeptical at first seeing the trailers, but I liked the movie a lot. It was a classic. I mean, it's become a classic. But, uh... They look even more realistic as each film progresses. So as you watch the films progress, you see not only the evolution of the story, but also the evolution of the technology of the time the film comes out because it really looks... Like, some of the faces in this movie were damn near, like, creepy as hell. But one of the big, uh, I guess, points of discussion about this film is that many people are saying it did not need to be made. First of all, uh, I just want to say that if the question is, did I like this movie, the answer is yes. If you like the Toy Story franchise, you will like this film. Does it feel like a side story? I think I don't think it feels like a side story. People are saying it feels like a side story. I think what it is is that Toy Story 3 had such a definitively perfect ending with the arc of you know, Woody and Andy kind of, you know, the conclusion of that arc and what would be the future of the toys. And it just ended on this kind of bittersweet, you know, you know, the, the love that the toys give the humans is always like a really important thing. And I think people really like that ending a lot. I think most, like I, everyone I talk to loves that ending. So I think that when this movie came out, I was like, okay, you guys had a great ending and then you screwed it up. I don't think it screwed up though. I think even though I agree that Toy Story 3 is a better ending for the franchise, this film I think does do a couple of things right. It gives it ends a character arc that was not discussed in 3 even though it was talked about briefly. I'm not going to spoil it. It brings back a character that we haven't seen in a while and it also wraps up the arc. It sort of has like a passing of the torch type thing, which I'm not going to again, I'm not going to spoil it, but uh if you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you know, Woody uh, has a very important role in this film, different from the other roles he's had in Toy Story. And that's one thing about this movie that's different from the other Toy Story films is that it does break a lot of the rules. This is controversial, I think, but there's a lot of rules that have been established as far as how toys communicate with humans that really haven't been broken or, or, or you know, played with until this movie. And I've seen some people actually say that, you know, the film, which is directed by uh, Josh Cooley... I've seen people say that the film, you know, because of what they did with the toys and, and how they sort of did things that they usually aren't supposed to do or don't do uh, in this movie. And there's a, there's obviously going to be a suspension of disbelief because it is a kid's movie. You know, these toys leave in the middle of a road trip and they're like, oh, I can make it back 10 miles. Like, no, you can't. You're a toy, you know, but it's a movie, you know, so you kind of have to, it's a Disney movie. You kind of ha have to just accept it and just say all right like it's not a big enough plot hole to where it makes me dislike the movie because all the toy story movies have that kind of sense of you know fantasy adventure you know what i'm saying but the movie does break a lot of rules when it comes to talking to, to, to the human characters and whatnot and i think to be honest people were saying you know i've seen people say that you know not having andy in this film as as the main kid hurt the movie even though he is in the film he does make an appearance i don't think it did i think bonnie's fine i think moving forward Bonnie you know because with Toy Story 4 it really does feel like a new beginning like people were, were probably assuming it's going to be the last one but with the ending of this movie there is a sense of finality however either way it is one of those things where um, it, it still can be a reboot in other words Toy Story 4 could easily lead to Toy Story 5 and 6 all, all you gotta do is just come up with an idea to bring everybody back and they'll bring everybody back it's you know, the characters, I mean. So it's not it's not impossible at all. Also, the film, I didn't even realize that it was dedicated to Don Rickles. You know, he passed away before uh, the film came out. But they uh, have, like, archival 
audio, you know, from other films, and they used it in the movie. But uh, overall, the movie did feel very adventurous. I mean, I was, I liked the movie. I know people, some people didn't like it. I really liked it. I think it's another good chapter in Toy Story. Again, could three have been a better ending? Yeah, three probably was a more fitting conclusion to the characters. But four is fine. Like, you can take, you know, you can go see this film. It's for all ages. If you like the franchise, if you like the, the arcs, the uh, the characters that you see in the previous films, they're still in character, you know, here. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things where, well, okay, Woody does act a bit different in this one, I think. Woody's, Woody's matured a lot. As weird as it may sound, because these toys are basically immortal. Uh, and there's actually a funny little thing in the film where, you know... They discuss how toys come to life, and at the end, during the mid credits, they kind of make a joke about it, and because it, it doesn't make any sense. So when you're watching the movie, you know, you're not really, you're like, huh, that can happen? I don't remember that happening. Well, they make fun of themselves, and whenever you do something like that, and you make fun of yourself. You do stuff depreciating humor. It kind of makes up for it. Also, Keanu Reeves is great in this movie. Key and Peele were. A, a, a pleasant surprise. My favorite new characters, I think, of this film, uh, and it's just funny to me how. Disney has the audacity to sell you a $25 Forky toy when you can damn well make that thing yourself at home. All right, you know you can do it. You know you can do it. And it's it's insane that they have the audacity to sell the official Forky merchandise when you can make your own Forky at home. Jeez, these guys. It's Disney though. It's almost like the, it's almost like a gag. I think somebody in the in the studio was like, "Hey, can we make this like dumb like looking you know, for character, can we, you know, merchandise this? Can we commercialize this? And it worked because they commercialize everything. Anyways, I like the movie. Go see it. Uh, thumbs up from me, and I'll catch you next time.